Eh, Lu? Ja, hvad er det? Jeg vil den gerne. Ja, hvor jeg vil den her story her, at det er så real. Real life, you know? So, what was all of this in front of you here? Well, I thought while I read, then you could get my little pedicure. Pedicure? Why are you going to a beauty salon? Nah, boy, with COVID and thing, I, I, I afraid to be out there too much in that kind of close contact with people. And I know you used to have a job every now and again. You just cut my nails, some and thing. So But why go and pay money when my tender, tender loving husband could? Do it for me. So I save them my money and I get them closer to you guys. Bonding, you know, all part of the bonding process. <laughs> bonding. The last time I cut them nails, I tell you, you better hire, hire a hacksaw blade man, yes? <laughs> oh gosh, Lancy, what do you expect when you're getting older? Your nails will get harder. I go try, but I can't promise to do a good job because um, it's all that fish you eat on the carcass, you know. And all the cows milk I drink, boy. Good calcium. Good calcium, yeah. The yeah. calcium. I can't cope with it, you know, with, and with these things. Yeah, now boys, every morning my father going and milk his cows and his fresh cows milk you drinking, you know. What? That's why you're so strong. Thank God for that. And good calcium, good bones. Them cows still alive? Nah, I drink out all their milk till they <laughs> die. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, tell me something. We got a pretty Jersey farm. I never see it before. Boy, Lancy, this a, I love the story about this Jersey, and I love the Jersey as equal. A friend of mine went to Aruba. A young man, you, you met him, right? Uh -huh. And he went to Aruba, Aruba, and he went um, snorkeling, and he found this good new Jersey in the middle of the ocean in Aruba while snorkeling. What? So he said, When he looked at it, he knew it was new. Not that it mattered to me, and it looked like it will fit me. So he brought it back, and he said, "Try it on, and if it fits, it's yours." So you had no problem wearing uh, something that was found in the sea or something like a like a second-hand thing. Well, boy, actually, when he brought it for me, right? When he and I tried it on, I said, "Yes, it fits both." I said, "Here, no man, I hear about fish um shopping online." But you went shopping, fishing, <laughs> fishing online, <laughs> and that was so funny, you know. When I tried it on, I love it. So what you asking me? I know that people who, you know, they, they can't handle second-hand things. I mean, for instance, we are blame Cora. We didn't have a problem wearing, you know, when the cousins would come and they would bring clothes for us. We didn't have a problem at all with that. And my mother would tell me, you know, when you see it's three o'clock, Lance, you go and have a bath and you put on your shirt. My shirt had a lot of patches on it at times. And I, once it was clean and smelling good, I had no problem at all. Right. I mean, what was it like in your village? Well, boy, you know, we really have a kind of similar background, eh? Which is what over the years we have been able to gel so well. Because in the carcass, where I grew up, which is closer to Venezuela than Trinidad, we are seven miles off Venezuelan border. So that's way, 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 remember when you met men, you say, if you was living down in Carcass, you wouldn't be able to come down to visit me down there at all, it was too far away. Yeah, that was a hard drive. Anyway, <clears throat> that little village that we lived in, it was a fishing village, and it coconut estate. So the main jobs that it had was who went working on the estate who were doing fishing and everybody was on the same level there was no first class and second class you know mm -hmm. everybody grew up in the village being on the same level we all went to school in the earlies barefooted and To come back to wearing secondhand clothes, I had three older sisters than me, so the only thing I knew about is not brand. You know, like how young people know if something is not a brand, they're not wearing it. But in our days, it was brand new secondhand, sometimes <laughs> third hand or even fourth hand. Right, right, right. Yeah. So once it fits you, sometimes of course it, you're growing to it. But we had no problem wearing each other clothes. 
and even sometimes family will give us clothes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I am glad that for that kind of background, growing up, knowing about sharing, and even when we had our children, I taught them that you know they would wear their cousins' clothes, and and we kept that culture that although we were in a better position that you can buy brands for your children. Yes, you will buy brands, but they, they had to know a little bit of your, the culture you came from. Right. So we kept that culture alive of children wearing one another clothes and so on. But now, things are so different. Everybody have their own clothes, their own taste, this brand, that brand. I say, but I like the old time ways. Mm -hmm. I love the old time ways. I was reading here in the book when you came, and I wouldn't say disturb me, <laughs> but engaged me about a discontented village. And you know, the discontented village. And it took me back to our village. Now, in this village, everybody thought that they were poor. And everybody thought that their problem was worse than the other person's problem. And they really were disgruntled and unhappy. And then they discovered, through someone speaking to them, that they are too burdened down thinking that their situation is the worst. And he suggested that everybody put their worries in a bag and then afterwards, when they look at it and they look at it, they go and choose whichever bag they would prefer. And sure enough, they all ran and pick up their own bag because they realized that their worries not bad as anybody that works on the other. And you know, when you really get bogged down in self-pity, that could take away caring and consideration for others. So we want to focus on our blessings, not discontentment, not wishing that we could have what others have, because we really don't know what others go through. So that is the kind of motto that we live by in the country. Mm. And you know, throughout life, I think I, we, we operated in that way. So you feel that you, you found a husband who shared similar, uh, values. similar values? Yes, definitely. We have a lot in common. You were brought up in the country from a family of 10. I was brought up by the sea, you were brought up by the river. Mm -hmm. And family of 10, the only difference is you had your parents while both our parents died. But it didn't change your values, eh? Not at all. As a matter of fact, when I married you, your parents became my parents. That's nice. I remember them going on to the carcass and enjoying it. And they just love our family, so. <coughs> mm -hmm. So we had a lot in common, and I think that's what takes us through a happy marriage, in spite of its ups and downs, its nooks and crannies. <laughs> Do you feel like your children have um, also exhibited these values? I would say so. I would say that I can see little things in the family, but um, I also will say that you can see in the last 20 years, Things have changed. Generally in the island, you mean? Throughout the world. Throughout the world. Yeah. You know, people, I guess, the whole lot of education standard, and so busy with schoolwork, getting to lessons, and so the value started changing because it's about getting ahead with education. But people who are very educated can't go very far now because, I mean, Everything is like contract labor and exactly nobody exactly. going through promotions like we did in our day. And we climbed the rungs of the ladder because of good work and dedication. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about education, but in the last twenty years, it is about education. Mm -hmm. So, so that has changed values a bit. Yeah, but you know, I noticed you talk about education. There's a man who comes around here and he sells. He had a small. He had a pickup. Now he's uh, graduated to a, a slightly bigger vehicle. And I tell you, I don't think he has much education, but he has a business acumen that is tremendous. What age is he? Has, he is so I figure he's up in his 50s. 
Well, you see, all that time values were, you know, people took pride and it was not, f the focus was not just education. Yeah. And why I'm not knocking education, you have to be qualified to move ahead in the world now. It has really robbed people of, you know, because of education, everybody want to top their class. Life has become very competitive, something that I never knew growing up to compete with anybody. Everybody live and let live. Well, what do you think? All right, for instance, okay, let me think about Farmer Harry. Oh Farmer Harry is, a, is an exemplary personality, yeah? Yes, and he has climbed, I mean, he has had a rough life. That is what you call when he told me about his background. It's a rough life, but that did not keep him down in, in, in the dirt. No. You know, and he's very self-taught. Yes. And common sense is made before book sense. That is correct. Common sense could take you through a lot of things. Because it's not everything in a book is practical. Mm -hmm. But when you have common sense and you can see through things, you, you find ways of dealing with issues and problems, even in the working world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you man. think it through. Yeah, these men like Farmer Harry and Mr. Bach too. Yeah. You know, deceased Mr. Bach. They were, they were geniuses in their own way. Yeah. And I mean, Harry is still around, thank God. But, you know, a man like Mr. Bach. An ingenious person, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Values, the, the values you grew up with, the survival stinks. Because life wasn't cushy. You know, you had to be responsible, you had to be innovative, and you develop that part of you. Mm -hmm. When yeah. you just, when you just tunnel vision education, you, you know, it, so, so it both has its pros and cons. Anyway, Louis, um, I, I'm willing to tackle this foot of yours, you know, but I feel that these nails, these nails, these nails. <laughs> okay, I'll soak it in some um, I'm feeling, sauce. <laughs> I feel they need a good shares. 